test. Hello traders, hello everyone and thank you for joining me in today's webinar. It's finally time for some education. Today we're going to talk about the supply and demand and to be honest with you, I'm really excited about this webinar today for more than one reason. First of all, I personally use supply and demand in my daily analysis and daily trading and basically that's why I'm doing this today because as per, you know, in, in our weekly analysis sessions, you guys asked for it and I'm here to deliver. So. I thought maybe yes we can do a specific webinar to go into all of the details that we need to know about the supply and demand how can we use supply and demand in our daily trading and and our daily analysis and that's why i'm here to help you with this right now so thank you very much for being with me today i'm really excited to start this webinar but before we start this webinar i always love to manage my audience's expectations why are you here you are here to learn something okay but i don't want to over promise you number one this is not the holy grail of trading there is no any one single tool or one single strategy that will make you millions of dollars that's the first thing that i want to do however on the other hand this webinar today just to be honest with you it will make you 100 percent better analyst or a better trader it's simple to follow and i've done you know while preparing the content for today i have done my best trying to simplify things for you and trying not to over complicate things because supply and demand is out there on youtube everywhere everyone is you know talking about supply and demand especially recently however when i've been using this strategy for years now i've noticed some things you know sometimes markets behave in a certain manner around supply and demand uh, how to specifically draw the supply and demand zones and so on so i have taken some strategy that's very well known however out of experience and out of practice i have definitely defined or you know uh, refined this strategy into uh, something that you will be able to follow simply after you know uh, attending today's webinar so that's the first thing the second thing is I don't know at which stage are you currently as a trader? Are you still a beginner? Are you an intermediate trader, you know, still trying to sort things out? Or are you actually an experienced trader at the moment? However, no matter what the situation or the stage that you're currently at, this webinar will definitely add more information to you. So whether you are still a beginner, I've simplified things very, very uh, much as much as I can. So you will be able to understand 100% of the material today. And if you are some uh, someone who has been in the markets for years, I'm 100% sure that you will be looking at supply and demand in a new way after today's webinar. So as I said, it's not the holy grail. It's not the simple strategy that will make you millions of dollars. Hopefully it will. But at the end, I will also tell you that this might be one of the best webinars that you will be attending in your trading career. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the webinar today, which is Mastering Supply and Demand. And the reason for basically doing this webinar today is you're always taught in the markets when you're still beginning is that the trend is your friend you must follow the trend and so on which makes a huge or problem for traders because yeah i can see a trend if prices are going up most people because they say okay trend is your friend let me buy however are you buying at a good price or maybe prices will start going down as soon as you enter this trade on the other hand if you are shorting or if, if prices are going down Everyone will tell you, okay, the trend is your friend. Yeah, it is until it's no longer your friend because prices will have to reverse. When looking at the reasons why prices actually reverse or why actually prices move, you will definitely understand that it's 100% supply and demand. So why is it important to understand 
supply and demand simply because prices moved based on the balance between supply and demand. I'll tell you something. Prices do not really move based on technical analysis. Technical analysis, if I'm telling you, okay, there is a support or there is a resistance, this doesn't move prices. Even news, let me tell you, news doesn't move prices. What moves prices is how people react to those news and simply change the supply and demand in the markets so prices move. So basically, if the supply is 100% equal to the demand, prices will never move, no matter what's happening, no matter how many supports or resistances do you have, no matter how many news are being released, if supply is equal to demand, prices will simply not move. However, we never reach this level where prices are, or supply and demand is equal to each other. Sometimes they are close to each other, which is called the balance, Sometimes they vary greatly. So you see supply is more than demand or demand is more than supply. So this is what makes the imbalance and creates new trends. So when demand exceeds supply, prices rise, which is pretty much normal because if people are willing to sell anything, let's say cars, okay? Don't think about financial markets right now. Think about cars. If all of us for any reason are living in one country and suddenly we just hate cars, let's you know use bicycles instead we all you know go online and we post our car cars for sale what will happen um, hundreds of people or even the whole country is selling or willing to sell their cars it's definitely an oversupply in order for me as someone who wants to really you know sell my car i will have to take price down because why would i sell it for fifty thousand dollars and you know a lot of people are trying to sell it at the same price so maybe i'll say okay i'm happy to accept for it forty five thousand dollars so that's how a lot of supply decreases price on the other hand if we already sold our cars and we are shifting you know to our bicycles we all want to buy new bicycles and there is only like two or three hundred bicycles left in town so we will all want to go and buy those bicycles simply the owner will say okay i have a shop i sell bicycles suddenly everyone in town is looking to buy new bicycles from me i only have 200 and it will be some time you know until i uh, have new supply so why not just raise the prices and you know I'll, I'll sell it for higher so more demand equals higher prices this is pretty simple supply and demand rules that not only works in financial markets but it works in the overall economy everywhere you know is affected by supply and demand and how those markets you know react to the forces of supply and demand is why we are actually learning this strategy okay I will have to uh, shut or you know close the chat in a moment here because you know uh, I don't want to be distracted. If you have any questions, just leave it on the chat. But my opinion is just leave it on the side note because by the end of the webinar, I'm pretty much 100% sure you will have no questions remaining. So if you have a question during any time of our webinar, just wait because I haven't answered this question yet, but it's coming, definitely coming, okay? So, why is it important to understand supply and demand? Because the shift of supply and demand is what actually moves markets. Not technical analysis, not supports and resistances, not even news, but how markets react to news. This is what creates the shift in supply and demand and makes, you know, price moves. Okay, prices are continuously seeking the equilibrium price, a phase where supply and demand forces are within a sideways range which is balanced, causing prices to move. What does it mean? It means that supply and demand are always, you know, having a fight. Just think of it as, as hunt, literally a fight between bulls and bears or buyers and sellers. Buyers want, you know, prices to go higher. Sellers, uh, you know, who are already selling, they want uh, prices to go lower. So prices are always fluctuating based on those shifts in supply and demand until or, you know, till that part comes when both buyers and sellers are slightly happy 
with the price at the moment. This is how you get a sideways range, or this is when you know open the chart, the price is not just moving higher, it's not moving lower, it's moving in a sideways range. Why is that? Because somehow supply and demand reach to an equilibrium price temporary brief period of time it's never you know forever because it's never just you know we have reached the equilibrium price thank you very much no it will have to change again uh, forces of supply and demand will change again and so on but briefly we might reach levels of equilibrium prices are moving sideways until something new happens that causes those supply and demand forces to shift either with higher demand so prices go higher or by higher supply, so prices go lower. This is how markets work, okay? After periods of balance, which as we call it's the equilibrium, supply and demand forces may shift in one direction or another, creating an imbalance that initiates a new trend in price action. This is perfectly what we have just explained, okay? Let me give you the chart for basic price movements. This is what you will actually, or this is how markets move. Although it's not how you see the charts, okay, this is, you know, just a theoretical chart, but this is how prices move. This is a level of balance here. What's happening here is that prices are not actually moving higher or lower. I will, from starting from now to the end of the webinar, I would like you to follow my cursor because I will be pointing out on things so you'll be able to follow me. Think of this as a virtual classroom, okay? So here, we are having a balance. Why? Because supply is equal to demand. Roughly, they are equal to each other. There is no increased interest on buying or selling this price, whatever it is. This might be gold, this might be oil, or whatever it is. So right now, we have a period of balance. As we said, it's never forever. So there will come a time, 100%, when those shifts will happen between supply and demand. And in this case, we have a huge upward move. Why is that? Because demand now is higher than supply. So we have a period of imbalance in markets. What happens after a period of imbalance? Again, we reach a new equilibrium price here. So markets move in a sideways range again in a new period of balance or equilibrium until we have another huge shift with supply now higher than demand. So we have a new er a period of imbalance. Again, period of balance followed by imbalance and so on. So markets basically move between balances and imbalances. Now we are having supply and demand, you know, uh, equal. So it's a balanced phase or an equilibrium price. Definitely something will happen that, you know, will, will either create more demand or create more supply. We will have a new period of imbalance and so on. So if you actually study supply and demand, sometimes you might be able to predict when those shifts will happen. And this is how we want to trade the move. OK, because all what we are saying so far is really good. But don't forget, we are here today for a reason. We want to become better traders, right? We want to become better analysts. So if I explain a whole lot of maybe two hours webinar for you and you cannot relate on how this could be applied on the chart, it's pretty much useless. But by the end today, I'll tell you exactly how to spot those supply and demand zones so you'll be able to trade on them, okay? Really good. Okay. So this is the basic price movements. We have just explained this theoretically. But this is an actual chart. I think it was the euro versus the Canadian dollar. What's happening here? Areas of balance. You can see prices here moved in a sideways range. Somehow we were having, you know, a balance between supply and demand. What happened here was an imbalance, huge upward move because demand definitely was higher than supply. Another level of balance, imbalance down, another equilibrium price slight move lower, another balance, imbalance, and so on. So when you open a chart, it might not be immediately visible using the candlestick charts. And that's why I wanted to explain it on uh, a line chart. But you see how much or how well the prices follow the basic movement of periods of balance and imbalance. Balance and imbalance. This is a huge imbalance here. An upward move here that basically demand 
was higher than supply, right? Okay. There are some essential points that I want you to note. Okay, guys, I'll tell you something. Technical analysis generally, uh, one of the disadvantages of technical analysis is that it's somehow subjective, okay? If you have been around in the markets for some time, you will know what I mean. Sometimes, you know, there is a, a chart pattern. I personally see it as a head and shoulders. Other one of my colleagues say it's a triple top or whatever, because how prices actually move, it could be interpreted differently between one analyst and other. So this is a disadvantage, you know, sometimes of technical analysts. And that's why you will have to be knowledgeable and you will have to be talented a little bit, you know, to be a good analyst. However, what I personally do in my trading and my technical analysis way and analysis generally is that I always try to be objective. And that's why today I will give you some set of rules. I want you to follow those rules 100%. Okay. Of course, it will not be, you know, uh, always accurate. But if you follow those rules objectively, time after time after time, you will be able that by time, okay, yeah, this actually works. So starting from now in the webinar, I, was, I want you to have a pen and paper. If you still don't have it, why, why don't you have a pen and paper <laughs> attending an educational webinar? But anyway, I'll give you some points that I want you, you know, to write down because later after this webinar, when you actually start practicing this, you will need to start following those objective rules. Okay. Rule number one, or the point number one, a supply or demand zone is composed of three parts. The leg in, which is the price movement leading into the zone, followed by the base, where the price temporarily balances, and then the leg out, which is the price movement exiting the zone. Think of this like maybe an upward move, balance, another upward move. So this is the leg in, this is the balance or the base, and this is the leg out. We will have to repeat this during the webinar again and again and again. So just stick with me and I'll make sure that by the end of the webinar, you will be, you know, uh, memorizing this by heart. Another example would be maybe a move lower some period of balance or a base before moving lower. So that's the leg in, that's the base, and that's the leg out. This is pretty basic. So in any supply or demand zone, in order to be able to correctly identify the zone, you will have to figure out three things. Where is my leg in, into the zone? Where is the zone itself? Where is the balance or the base? And where is the leg out, okay? After identifying a potential supply or demand zone, you should wait for prices to return to test the base, where there may be unfilled orders remaining. Only then you can trade, anticipating the prices will move in the same direction. Let me explain to you this. Let's say we're having scenario, okay? Just, you know, a move higher. This is the leg in, which is LI, okay? This is the base because we have some sort of balance here. We have a huge move lower. This is the leg out. We have seen this. I can see this already happened in the markets. I didn't trade it yet because actually this happened already. It's in the past. What should I do? When you correctly identify this as a supply zone because prices were moving higher, we had a base and then we are moving lower. So this is a supply zone you must wait for prices to take its time, go back again, and start moving lower. Why is that? Because somewhere around here, there were higher selling orders than buying orders. So supply here was higher than the demand, right? Sometimes when people, a lot of people sell, not all of the orders are filled because as soon as some of us start selling, prices immediately starts going down. Some people will say, okay, it's trading around this level right now. Prices are already lower. I don't want to sell at this prices. So me, I might be a willing seller, but prices here are not so good for me. So what I will do is normally, I will wait for prices to go higher again, 
until it reaches this level again where i can see okay now the prices are high again for me to make you know money if i sell my 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 whatever here so me i am a willing seller i was not able to sell here prices moved way faster than i could so here i'm being treated as an unfilled order when prices are going back again to my level i will fill my order here i will sell and this time prices will go back again this is the ba basic stuff and that's why it's really important to know where those imbalances happen between supply and demand because where those zones create 100 percent. if you draw the supply and zone correctly and i'll show you how make sure that almost 80 percent of the time there are unfilled orders in this zone when prices touch those levels again it will move in the same direction this is so much theoretical so far however as we move into the webinar i'll make sure that we will see this practically and i'll make sure that you will be able you know to check this on the chart so back again to this point and that's why we're saying after identifying a potential supply or demand zone you should wait for prices to return and test the base okay remember we have three parts in any zone the leg in the base and the leg out this happened in the history you just identify the zone you wait for prices to go back into your base and you will trade you know in the direction where there, there, there may be unfilled orders remaining, only then you can trade, anticipating that prices will move again in the same direction. This will be the last theoretical point. Focus only on fresh zones that haven't been tested yet. Why? Because if we have a price, let's talk numbers now. If we have a price, let's say 2,500 on gold, this is just an example. If 2,500 level or price is a supply zone, so we have seen a decline maybe from 2,500. If prices go back again, as I said, there may be unfilled orders. So we will be trading, you know, selling from 2,500. Now those unfilled orders are filled again. Don't trade, you know, again at the same levels if prices go back for the third time because you know there are no any unfilled orders left they have been filled previously so you will have to focus on the fresh zones where are the most recent supply and demand there are some unfilled orders here when we go back to either support or resistance and uh, we we fill those orders خلص, you can just delete the supply and demand and we will look for another and i'll tell you exactly how to know the fresh zones and how to trade on that in classic price action this is only rbr rbd but delivered in another language it's not another language it's exactly rbr and rbd just stick around okay let's start with supply okay throughout this webinar i'll provide you with four formations four setups I want you to memorize them if you have it you know a pen and paper you'll just be drawing this with me right now and let's start with the first setup for the supply this is exactly what you're talking about hanatari hanatari okay and this is the rbd which is the rally base drop what's happening here simply is that prices were moving higher right somehow here during those three candles prices were moving slightly in you know a, a sideways range and then we have had a huge move lower so this was an imbalance higher demand was higher right here we reached a slight period of balance this is our base and then some imbalance happened again supply was higher than demand and we had this huge leg out that pushed prices lower this here is a supply zone 100 percent supply zone because apparently when we tapped into those prices some supply here people okay let's sell this whatever it is gold oil euro dollar whatever it is a lot of selling pressure happened here and it created a supply zone around this level and it led to the leg out so that's my leg in 
that's the base and that's the leg out okay and this is why it's called a rally which is here the base which is here and the drop this is a sort of or not sort it's one of the supply uh, zones that i want you to remember okay so what's the rally base drop what's the formation price rallies which is the leg in it consolidates in a balance zone which is the base followed by a strong strong drop which is the leg out okay what's the setup the base acts as a supply zone and traders look to enter short positions when price returns to this zone anticipating a drop why because as we said if this is a fresh supply zone right we, we've, we've had the leg in base and the leg out not everyone who wanted to sell might have sold here why because prices okay it, it moved too quick i wanted to sell but i couldn't so here those levels there are unfilled orders i'll not try the whole word but you get me okay when prices go higher again to this level me as someone who wanted to sell here previously i will now sell so the unfilled orders will be filled again when we touch this level and we as traders who work with the supply and demand we want to be here we want to be waiting for price to go back or to come back and touch those levels where we know for a fact that they have some unfilled orders and we will just ride the wave with them we will just be shorting again with them here and this is how and this is why we actually identify the supply zone because we will be waiting for prices to go the, up again to touch those levels when those levels have the unfilled orders okay let's fill our orders too with those unfilled orders and that's why here it says the base acts as a supply zone and traders look to enter short positions when the price returns to this zone anticipating a drop okay what is the second supply formation so right now we have talked about the rally base drop another slight difference is the drop base drop it's supply okay but here the leg in was basically a decline so instead of a leg in being you know a rally base drop here it's you know different it's a drop base drop this slight or this strong sorry move lower means maybe we have some unfilled orders here to sell if prices go higher again we are anticipating another move lower so this is the second supply formation we have talked about the rally base drop and this is the drop base drop if the formation name ends with a drop it's supply zone okay pretty much simple and easy what's the drop base drop the price drops okay again this is the leg in remember the three uh, parts of any supply or demand zone we, we said we have a leg in we have a base and we have a leg out so price drops creating the leg in it consolidates in a balance phase supply and demand here comes to an, a temporary brief balance so prices are just moving in a sideways range and it creates the base and then drops again to create the leg out what's the setup the base forms a continuation pattern because it was moving lower and it again went lower it's a continuation it's not a reversal so traders enter short positions on the retest of the base expecting further downside moves okay so we have finished so far the supply it's a rally base drop or a drop base drop and it has to end with the word drop because it's supply can you think with me right now what the demand zones should end with rally not drop because it's demand so the first one will be a drop base rally it's exactly the opposite for the first one so the first one was a rally base drop that's supply if we reverse that it's a drop base rally what's happening here prices were moving lower that's my leg in we consolidate for a brief period of time you know this candle this candle two candles we haven't really much moved not lower and not higher so we form a base and then boom some demand enters into the market people are suddenly uh, willing to buy this okay so a lot of people buying here 
Does this mean every one of us who wanted to buy here actually were able to cut or to catch the price? We didn't. Because if I want to buy, okay, let's say I'm willing to buy this. Let's say this is gold price, just for an example. Uh, I see prices here are good for buying, okay? I went to, you know, uh, answer my phone, I went to do anything, and I come back, okay, price is now trading here. Now I would say, okay, I wanted to buy down here. Prices were f so fast, it already is trading around, you know, a higher price. No, it's maybe higher than I would like to pay for it. I, I don't want to buy around those prices. What am I? I am, through the market, an unfilled order. I was a willing buyer down here and I wasn't able to buy for any reason. I couldn't catch the price. So as long as it, it would take for prices, you know, higher, I will be waiting for prices to go down again. Only then I would say, yeah, okay, prices are now back to the level where I wanted to buy at. Let's buy from here. So me, as an unfilled order, now I'm filled. If we all fill our remaining orders again, prices will start moving higher. And this is how a demand zone, you know, pushes prices higher. So it's a drop base rally. And let me get you, yeah. So the formation is the price drops. It's a leg in. It consolidates in a balance phase, which is the base and f it, it, it's followed by a strong rally. So it's a leg out. So it's a drop base rally. The base acts as a demand zone and traders look to enter long positions on the retest of the zone, anticipating another rally. Guys, we have talked about two supply formations, which is the rally base drop and the drop base drop. We have talked about one demand level, which is the drop base rally. Can anyone try to expect or anticipate with me what would be the fourth formation, which is the second demand one? Guys, I, I would really want you to engage with me in the chat right now at this point, because moving forward, we will be having a knowledge test, by the way. So can anyone tell me what's the fourth formation that we will be looking at? Hmm. <laughs> Good. Okay, Assam and Hector said RBR, which is 100% correct. It's pretty easy, you know, it's a rally base rally. And yes, prices here were moving higher. And, and this is the exact opposite of the drop base drop. So prices were moving higher, that's my leg in. We formed a base. Some, you know, were able to buy here, so they pushed prices higher. Some, like me, unfortunately, I'm still an unfilled order. I couldn't catch price. What I'll do is I'll wait for prices to go down, touch the level so I can buy. My filled order or my unfilled orders will be now filled and we expect a continuation higher. And this is the rally base rally, okay? What's the formation and the setup? So the formation is that the price rallies, consolidates in a balance phase. Slight balance, slight, you know, equilibrium between supply and demand. And that's why we have the base. Always, when you think of the base of any supply or demand zone, just think of equilibrium. We have reached slight equilibrium between supply and demand. Okay? So price rallies, consolidates in a balance phase, and then rallies again. And the base forms a continuation pattern where traders enter long positions on the retest of the base, expecting further upside move. Good, very good. You make it sound easy, love it. Thank you very much, it's my job, okay? If, if, it's, if, if an educational webinar, it's not simple, why even do an educational webinar? Okay, so there we are. We have our four setups. We have two for supply, the rally base drop, or the base uh, drop base drop, we have the demand, drop base rally, and the rally base rally. Just think of it this way. I don't care about the leg in. As we move forward with the webinar, you will know how little we do actually pay attention to the leg in, in any supply or any zone, sorry, supply or demand. Because what I do care about is the base and the leg out. So here we have a base and a drop, it's supply. Here we have a base and a drop, it's supply. I don't care where prices are coming from, whether it's a rally or a, a drop. At the end, I have a, a base, 
prices are slight equilibrium and we have a leg out a powerful move here it's a drop and here it's a drop so this forms or creates our two supply zones on the other hand on the demand zones i don't care where prices are coming from which is the leg in what i care about is i have a base slight equilibrium before the boom that pushes prices higher okay so just focus on the base and the leg out nice by now you might be having a question is any price move higher or lower fueled by supply and demand does can i can i just open the chart and say okay prices are moving higher here demand is higher or prices are moving lower supply is lower where is my base where's my leg in where's my leg out no or yes okay any move in the markets let me explain it to you any move in the market whatever what happens it's definitely because supply and demand is always challenging each other 100 percent slightly higher supply means price is moving slightly lower slightly higher demand means the prices are slightly moving higher and so on however in order to be able to use this concept in trading i don't want you to focus on any price move because not any price move with differences between supply and demand will have unfilled orders that we will be trading with okay i mean if supply is slightly higher so prices are slightly moving lower could i tell you that okay we have unfilled orders when prices go up again sell no how can i know if there's maybe there's not any unfilled orders maybe everything was just filled so what i want you to focus on is strong moves when prices move quickly enough that i'm sure 90 percent of the time that prices moved quickly i'm sure maybe not everyone were able to catch the price here and sell or buy whether at supply or demand so is any price move higher or lower fueled by supply and demand technically yes because it's just it's a shift but we should only focus on strong price moves as it results in high probability setups why because we know a strong move most probably means that there are some unfilled orders in the markets and this is how we will be trading with them so this means we will analyze the type and strength of the move by studying the candlesticks to assess momentum okay excuse me <clears throat> okay now because we said that we will have to focus on the strong moves only how can i know this is a strong move or not how can i know that this move because it's a shift in supply and demand it has unfilled orders or not okay to be honest because i'm not here to you know uh tell you any fake information or false information you can never be 100 percent sure but with some rules i'm giving you today you might be 80% or 90% sure because at the end I'm not telling you that every supply and demand zone will be respected sometimes no okay we can divide candlestick types into three broad types explosive candles decisive candles and indecisive candles and you will be able to see here beside the explosive candles I wrote between brackets the leg out because the leg out out of any supply or demand zone I want it to be powerful enough that we will have to call the candles explosive candles. So I can be sure that this move, because it was powerful in the candlesticks, still might have, you know, unfilled orders in this zone. So this is the leg out, which is the explosive candles. We have another thing, which is called the decisive candles. And most probably this is the leg in. We have the indecisive candles and this is the base. If you're wondering what this means, this means that we will have to explain each candle type how far back would you go draw supply and demand lines sir this is not time for practice wait just stick around i told you every question would be answered this is the explosive candles okay and this is just you know a simple explanation so that's a bullish explosive candle and that's the bearish e explosive candle how can i know this is an explosive candle or not now we'll have to focus on the conditions of explosive candles the candle body, which is the distance between the open or here, the open and the close, 
it has to be larger than 75% of the total candle range. Okay? What is the total candle range? It's the distance from the highest high or the high of the candle to the low. So from here down to here from the high to the low, this is the total range of the candle, the total range in which we traded in during that specific candle. But the body, it has to be larger than 75% of the candle range. This is an explosive candle, okay? And in the bearish example, you know, the open was here and the close was here. And this has to be more than 75% of the total range from the high to the low. Is it only one condition? No. The other condition is that the overall candle range from the high to the low is bigger than the previous candles. Okay. Because if, if we only work with the first condition, you might open a chart and get me a really small candle, but it's a full candle. We, we, we don't have wicks large enough. You cannot say this is an explosive candle. It has to be a full candle with, you know, the body 75% larger than the total range. But generally, the total range of the candle, it has to be powerful enough. It has to be bigger than the previous candles. When you see it, in, in terms of, you know, other price action, you will know, okay, this, in terms of the previous, you know, candles, it might be an explosive candle, okay? Is it an engulfing candle? Um, it, maybe, yes, but not always. Yeah, I mean, the engulfing candle might be an explosive candle if it's really larger, but if the engulfing candle is still small, it might be engulfing the previous one, but overall the range is small. So it has to be, you know, a little bit subjective and we will check it on the charts. And that's why we have a knowledge test, which is coming up in five minutes. Okay. What is a decisive candle? Immediately, as, as, as soon as you see the decisive candle, you will notice the difference. Now, okay, it's still a strong candle, but not as strong as the explosive one. The body is just larger than 55% of the total candle range. So in the decisive candle, I'm okay seeing some larger wicks than the explosive candle. Um, so now the body is slightly, you know, smaller relative to the total range. It's only larger than 50% 50, 50 of the total candle range, okay? And the overall range is relatively bigger than the previous candles, you know? It's not very much bigger. It's not that immediately, yeah, this is an explosive candle. Always, when you see the explosive candle, you will know it. And, and we will, of course, we will see examples, but I mean the explosive, as the name implies, it's just explosive. When you see it, yeah, this is a huge momentum coming in the markets. But the decisive, yeah, it's, it's a strong candle, but not as explosive, okay? So the body, it should be bigger than 50% of the total range, and it's relatively bigger than the previous candles. Same for the bearish, the open is here, the close is here, and the total candle range, you know, should be slightly bigger than the previous uh, candles. Now, with the indecisive candles, as the name says, it's indecisive. You name it, you name it. You can see a hammer, a shooting star, uh, a doji, you know, all of this. Uh, but the overall condition is it's indecisive. We don't really know what's going on with the markets. And the body is smaller than 50%. We have a small body, you know. No one is in full control of the markets because it opened here, it closed slightly higher, or it opened here, it closed slightly lower. So the price difference throughout the candle is basically small because somehow maybe there is a, sh uh, a, a balance between supply and demand. Maybe they are coming to nearly to be equal. It's not 100%. It's never 100% equal for the supply to be as the demand, but it's slightly, you know, close because prices are just, you know, it's ranging. It has a big range, but the actual price difference between the open and the high, which is the body, it's less than 50% of the total candle range. And the overall range for the candle is smaller than the previous candles. So after a big move, as we said, we come to a period of balance. No, no, no big enough movements in the markets. We're just, you know, having uh, smaller moves and moves. So that's the explosive, just, you know, 
I want you to focus with it real quick because the knowledge test is coming or the checkpoint is coming. That's the explosive big candles. This is the decisive candles. It's slightly smaller, but it's still good big candles. Indecisive, they are just nothing. Okay, time for the checkpoint. Okay, I'll tell you something. I'll, I'll have to ask you now and you will have to answer with me. So this is an engagement checkpoint. I will ask you and I'll have to reply. Um, and I've tried as much as I could to make the candles clear enough. Uh, so yeah, let's start. This is a candle. I want you to write down in the comments right now. Do you think this is decisive, indecisive or explosive? And yes, I know it would be somehow challenging to decide because we don't have previous candles. Okay. Explosive, 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 decisive, explosive. To be honest with you, I cannot even remember what I call this one, but we will we will see now. But you know, in order to be 100% able to uh, de decide whether this is explosive or indecisive, or especially the the the, um, the confusion happens between explosive and decisive because it depends also on the previous price action. Okay, this is basically decisive. I I, I see it as decisive. It's yeah, it's good, but we still have a big wick, so. Yes, it's a decisive candle. So somehow, and this is where subjectivity kicks in. Somehow we might be confused a little bit. At the end, it's a strong candle. Okay, how about this? Explosive, decisive or indecisive? Come on, guys. Indecisive. Decisive, someone said explosive. No, this is definitely not an explosive. Overall, candle range is really small. So some say explosive. No, 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 guys, not explosive. It's indecisive, 100%. 100% indecisive. It's just, you know, very small. I mean, the range itself, okay? How about this one? Explosive, decisive, or indecisive? Explosive in capital letters, John. Exactly. Thank you very much. This is an explosive. Slightly, you know, the the um, the wick here is slightly smaller than the previous one, which is you know we we had a confusion about. But yeah, most probably this is explosive. I cannot say this is decisive. A huge downward move. How about this one? explosive okay guys are screaming in the chat come on guys when you just type with the caps on i think you're you know okay guys halas, calm down it's explosive yes you are correct good boom <laughs> okay what's how about this one and to be honest i don't even remember what i wrote it down as uh i cannot remember explosive explosive indecisive explosive it's decisive i'm not sure why i called it it's decisive it might be in this uh, it might be decisive or explosive it's still uh you know it's it's a full strong candle we will have to look at the previous uh price action body is a bit small sometimes small candle like hammer inverted hammer very powerful sometimes it's fake yes depends on the previous price action how about this one guys i think we have four remaining or three remaining is it an explosive in uh, decisive or indecisive this is indecisive 100 percent yes because the body is really small compared to the total range how about this one same indecisive right 100 percent how about this one this is this should be clear no not explosive hector it's decisive no not in this it's decisive i think did i write it down as decisive where is it yeah it's decisive and let's end this short break and checkpoint with this one what do you think it is explosive <laughs> yes it's explosive so yes um what i want to say is we might be a little bit confused between decisive and explosive uh, this one is explosive a huge one maybe because you know i when i was you know drawing those candles this to me is decisive it's not as big as this one this one is definitely explosive this one is slightly smaller anyway 
you will have to check the previous price action and we will definitely do this when we go through the charts as well okay now we have what, what, what have we known so far we have known that we have supply zones and we have demand zones we have really understood why supply and demand zones are powerful and why we could trade with them as we said there are some unfilled orders we have known what are the three parts of any supply zone or demand zone we have a leg in we have a base and we have a leg out right okay so now we want to actually identify supply and demand zones search for recent clear and strong price moves on your chart simple recent it has to be recent because it has to be a fresh zone don't go back to 1990 and just tell me this is a supply zone i don't care what happened way back i care about what happened recently where are the recent unfilled orders positioned on the uh, chart where would people think of selling or buying if prices go back again so i want to search for recent clear and strong price moves on the chart this is ideally characterized by explosive candles now we will start you know to combine what we have known about candles about what we have in addition to what we have known about supply and demand so if you're looking for a leg out which is the first step of identifying supply and demand i want you to look at explosive candles and some of you got confused with the knowledge checkpoint but believe me when we check the charts you will know and you will just say this is an explosive candle so it's pretty simple to get so search for explosive candles recent candles clear with strong price moves why because this is the leg out this is uh, where prices moved too quick that some people might have been left out of the party they are willing to buy or sell but they just couldn't because prices moved before they could act there are some unfilled orders and this is your zone okay step number two so i have known the leg out i've defined my leg out step number two is to try and identify the leg in phase so we have a huge move where did this come from and this is where you identify your leg in phase typically characterized by decisive candles it could be explosive candles as well but most probably it's decisive okay what we have done so far we have sorted out and figured or found the leg out phase or the leg out movement we have also searched for the leg in if we just separate this or mark this you will be left with the base which is between the leg in and the leg out so after identifying the leg in and leg out phases you should be able to find a series of indecisive candles 99 percent of the time the base should have indecisive candles because it wouldn't really be a base if you had decisive candles or explosive candles this indecisive candles it shows that okay we don't really know what's going on in the markets at the moment supply is not much much higher demand is not much much higher maybe we are at this time of balance in the markets and this is why the base 99 percent of the time and this is an objective rule i want you to write it down when you're looking for a base you must see indecisive candles does it happen that yeah maybe you have a base with no indecisive candles sometimes but very very rare like you know flash crash or whatever is happening so just people sell we don't care about what what the recent price action is just sudden shift in supplier demand and this is acts of god it happens but it's not the rule the rule is the base must have indecisive candles okay this area is the base so in order to identify supply and demand you should look in recent price action for strong moves this is your leg out explosive candles you then look at where this move came from where's the leg in and when you identify the leg in you identify the leg out you have the base and this is how you know your supply and demand quickly what we have discussed is when you say recent how far backwards and which time frame guys i told you keep the questions for now i will answer this so this is the what is it can you can you follow my mouse and tell me 
what what this one is called it's a drop okay what what, ha what happened after that it's a base drop okay so it's a supply it's a drop base drop so where is the leg out here's the leg out this is the first stage you know um in identifying the the supply and demand zone so this is the leg out explosive candles powerful candles we can see it where's the leg in here is the leg in okay and between the leg in and the leg out we have a series of some indecisive candles and this is the base this is where i i know that the base here is some sort of supply and don't be too quick i will tell you exactly how to draw the lines on the base so you're 100 percent near the supply level itself okay so it's not be it, it will not be subjective just draw a rectangle or just you know this is your supply and so on i'll tell you exactly how to draw it but for now this is your leg out this is your leg in we have identified those whereas the middle it's the base thank you very much okay so this is the leg out this is the leg in and this is the base how about this one it's a rally base rally so it's uh where is it it's not i'm missing okay so this is uh this is the leg out which is the first thing we look for because prices you know that's the recent move we have had this leg out where is the leg in here is the leg in what you are left with is the base which is in between and this is the rally base rally and this is you know the other two examples okay Guys, you will need to start preparing yourself because I will need to test you again right now on a real chart. But let me, uh, you know, uh, explain this quickly. So this is the leg out here. It's a strong rally. This is the leg in. It's a decline. Those are explosive candles. Those are, you know, the leg in. It might be explosive. It might be decisive. But the base, it has to be small candles. It has to be indecisive. And for here, we have a leg out. We have a leg in. And we have the base. This is a drop base rally this is a rally base drop guys where do you see explosive candles here uh what you will do is you will see the chart and try to tell me roughly where is you know which month roughly we, we you can see some explosive candles october october nice i'm happy not sure whether I explained it really well or I gave you a, a simple example. Someone says November. Where is November? It doesn't even say here. Uh, July. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Someone said November. You're perfect because you, you didn't just say October here. You said November. You Guys, you see this November 2023. Yeah, 100%. Someone says December. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're all correct. Because if you see the charts here, if you see the candles, I don't really see any powerful move. Just follow my mouse. You know, it's not so powerful. It's just up and down. And that's why I told you supply and demand. Yes, it changes prices. Uh, it causes fluctuations, but not every move I'll be concerned with. It's not, you know, unfilled orders. I just, you know, move. Oh, boom. Oh, okay. This is here. Something is happening here. This here shows that demand is way higher than supply. This is explosive candles. Look at those explosive candles. You see, this candle alone, it's higher than, or it, the range itself is higher than the previous one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's way higher or way bigger than the previous um, candles, right? So this is some, you know, a few of explosive candles what does it mean this means don't forget what are the three steps to identify supplier demand first leg out so yes the area where you actually said we have some explosive candles you're correct this is my leg out the second thing is the leg in where is the leg in so okay this is the leg out where did this move start if you can see here you know um, we have some candles moving in a sideways range with high wicks. This is the base. So what's before the base is basically my leg in. So this is a leg in, an upward move, and this is a huge upward move. So this is decisive, maybe explosive. This candle is really explosive. We had a base and the leg out. So this is my demand zone. 
this is a leg in base leg out so it's a rally base rally pretty easy i i think so now another example where do you see some explosive candles i think this one is easier than the previous one or are you getting better let, let me see which instrument is this by the way oh, no, I, I don't really remember because when i'm preparing a webinar i just go through the charts looking for what i'm looking for uh, i think it's it might be euro canadian let me check yeah because it says here canadian so most probably it's euro canadian but which time frame i don't really remember but it's it's a big time frame so um yeah hector you are great you didn't just tell me where or what time you told me what price 1.08 people are saying august august september which is somewhere around here yes guys you're 100 percent correct this is an explosive move and that's why i told you uh, I'm, I'm, i tried you know during the theoretical phase you know to provide you with some rules 50 percent or 75 percent body to candle range or body to range what, whatever but i told you when we look at the charts you will know where where are the explosive candles it's simple so yes this is an explosive candle what should we do definitely identify it as a leg out okay this is my upward move this is where maybe we had so much buying power coming in that some people are left down here with unfilled orders they wanted to buy but they just couldn't okay so where is the leg in this is the leg out leg in is definitely here somewhere around here so yes where is it okay i just had two slides in one okay so that's the leg out the leg in is a small decline uh it's decisive maybe one decisive candle so decisive we have two candles around the same level I will need to, you know, I don't know if I can do this or not. Yes. So two base candles, small candles, boom, leg out. So drop, base, rally. And this is a demand zone. Why is it doing this? Okay, anyway. Now to an important question. We have known how to, we have already known, you know, or checked the supply and demand formations, how to identify them. I told you, check for the leg out, check for the leg in, you are left with the base. Thank you very much. Now, specifics, how to draw supply and demand zones. And we are already near this end of the webinar. I mean, we will be left with some practical applications. So if you are somehow seeing that this is going way too far, we're getting a lot of information. It's not, it's just the little bit you know last piece of information during this webinar because i would need to tell you if you identify a zone how to draw it where should i place my trades and so on okay so how to draw a supply and demand zone any zone consists of two lines think of it as a rectangle okay think of it like this higher line and lower line this is a zone price and price whether it's supply or whether it's demand. So any zone consists of two lines and you will need to write this down. The first one is the distal line. And from its name, it's distal, it's far. So this is the outer boundary of the zone. It's marked on the extreme wick of the base candles. So it's the lowest wick in a demand zone or the highest wick in a supply zone. Again, I couldn't explain this because it's simple, but it will be more, uh, you know, understandable when I check the charts. So this is the outer boundary of the zone marked on the most extreme wick of the base candles, the lowest wick in a demand zone or the highest wick in a supply zone. Don't care about this right now. We will check it on the chart. It serves as a reference point for placing stop loss okay now we are talking crates now we are talking about how to trade this where do i place my stop loss your stop loss should always be below the distal line in a demand zone or higher than the distal line in a supply zone okay so this is the reference point for placing stop loss orders just beyond this, this line as breaking through indicates that the zone is no longer valid and it makes sense so this is the farthest 
the, the extreme price of the supply and demand zone. If I'm selling near supply, I want to place my stop loss above the distal line because if prices went higher it, it just went higher it is what it is and it happens in markets now, and that's why i'm told you at the beginning it's not a holy grail not every supply and demand zone will be respected at the end of the day markets shift but i'm telling you if you are selling your supply your distal line is the higher or the farthest one your stop loss is just slightly above the distal line or in the demand zone if you're selling or buying in a demand zone your stop loss is just lower than uh, the distal line. What's the proximal line? It's the other one. This is the closer line, uh, line to current price action. It serves as the entry price for your trade and can be drawn in two ways. Guys, because I've been doing education for years, <laughs> I told you not to ask questions before I come to them. Someone just asked me a question. Some opinions recommend the body instead of the wick. Why? Because here we have two versions, either the preferred version, which is drawn on the candle bodies of base candles, and the wide version, which is drawn on extreme wicks of base candles. So this is where subjectivity takes another slight role. Personally, based on my experience, I work with the preferred version. I, I don't, I, 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 I can understand that you don't even know what the preferred version is so far or the wide version, but I will show you both. Um, I, I work with the preferred version. Some other analysts work with the wide. It's totally fine. It's your decision. Now let's have a look on those lines. Come on guys. What's this? It's the drop base drop. Okay. Wait guys, I'll do something. Can I, can I hide this? Can I? Yeah. No, I cannot. Oh. I, I, okay. Don't, where is it? I don't want you to focus on this one. Just focus with me on, on this one first, which is the wide version. So it's a drop, base, drop. The distal line, someone said cut it. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So that's the wide version. That's how you can actually draw uh, the zone on the supply and demand in a drop base drop. What's the distal line? As we said, here I'm waiting, prices are trading around here, right? Which one of the two lines is closest to price action? It's the proximal. Because when prices go up, you know, this is the closer line. It's not the distal. The distal, the distal line is always the farthest one. So the proximal, as the definition says, which might have been so, you know, complicated, but the proximal line is the line closer to the price. This is the proximal line. And somehow this is where you should place your sell order, because when prices go higher and tap into the supply, it should go lower again. OK, how can I identify the proximal line in the wide version? Just focus with me on the base candles. This one, was it? What, what it is? It's an explosive candle. This one, it's a decisive or an explosive. I would say decisive. Some would say explosive. This one, I think it's an explosive. What's this? Indecisive. What's this? Indecisive. So from here, my base starts, right? Because we said you identify the leg out, you identify the leg in, and you focus with the base. Where does the base start? In order to find the base, look for the indecisive candles. This one is indecisive. Let me clear it. Okay. This one is indecisive. From here, we move, you know, in a sideways range till here. This is explosive. So this is the start of the leg out. So I'm left with the base candles. Those, right? This is my base. And this is what I will need to draw the actual supply and demand. In this case, if you're using the wide version, just get me all of the zone. Where's the lowest wick? It's here. Where's the highest wick? It's here. So this is your proximal, this is your distal. Thank you very much. And this is how you can draw it. This is the wide version, okay? So in the wide version, the, you, you just take all of the range, all of the base candles. Where's the highest base candle or the highest wick in the base candles? And in this case, it's this one. And where's the lowest wick? in the uh, base candles, it is this one. In this case, 
just thank you very much this is your distal line because it's the farthest one i don't care about the names you just know that this is where you should have your uh, line drawn this is a price critical price and the lowest one is the proximal line okay in this case if i'm waiting for prices to go higher if you use uh, you know pending orders maybe selling here at the proximal line is a good idea where should your stop loss be as we said the stop loss is always just beyond the distal line a little bit so it might be a little bit here you don't want to place it exactly on the distal line because prices might just you know come for a retest here so a slightly higher just you know in the worst case to give you know the prices a little bit of a breathing room okay so you enter here your stop loss is a little bit around here maybe your target is you know like this this is you know how you trade the uh, supply so that means that we learn rally base rally and drop base drop right why can't you wait why can't you give me a minute why i cannot explain all four setups at once so i started with this one but we will go through the four don't worry just stick around okay now let's go for the preferred version and in this case i will need you know to put both aside one thing I want you to learn is that the distal line never changes. It has to be the extreme wick. It has to be the extreme, okay? So in this case, it's the same price action exactly, by the way. So in this case, the distal line was, sorry, where's the, can I read it? Yeah. In this case, the distal line was around this higher wick, which is the highest wick in the base candles. In this case, it's the same, okay? We didn't change the distal, it can never be changed. What could be changed is the proximal line. Because we were here working with the wide version. I told you, just take the extremes. So we draw it uh, here, or we drew it here on you know the lowest wick. But in the preferred version, we don't look at the wicks, we look at the bodies of the candle. Just disregard the wicks completely and draw the, your proximal line on the lowest body candle which is here this one and this one slightly the same or exactly the same it's you know two opposite candles so instead of you know working with the whole zone no we just you know took part of it which is the uh, body to body you know um, in this case if prices go higher your stop loss will uh, your your sell entry will be here stop loss doesn't change because the distal line doesn't change it's the same and you should expect prices to go lower okay now we have learned a little bit about wide and preferred and we will look into other setups should you work with the wide or the preferred okay i'll tell you something you will be the one to take your decision because yes as i some said the preferred it's more conservative if you sell here and your stop loss is here let's say this is a risk of maybe hundred dollars maybe okay but in the wide version if you sell here and your stop loss is here this is maybe a hundred and thirty dollars risk why because your stop loss is now farther away you here sold a little bit early because you're working with the wide if I was working with the preferred and you work with the wide, I would sell here and you would sell here. So you are getting uh, a price that's not the best, okay? So anyone would say, okay, then we would work with the preferred. Yes, but it also has a downside, which is really bad. Sometimes, if this is the wide version, right? Because we are working with the wicks, sometimes price will just go higher. I have my sell order here. You have your sell order here. If you're working with the white, you can just miss the trade. And it's so bad when this happens. And it happens with me quite a lot. But to be honest, I don't care because I'm a conservative trader. I, not, not every trade I'll be in. Okay. You can just, you know, sometimes analyze the trade and it goes in your favor, but you're just out of the trade completely. This is totally fine. So the white version is more aggressive. You will be into more trades, but with more, you know, risk and to me i use the preferred i i just want you know to limit my risk to this one 
and it will be easier for me because where's your risk if this is the distal line and you have your stop loss around here and i sell at the proximal line this is your risk right this is one r if i want to get out with a risk to reward ratio of two to one or i mean one to two i want prices to go down like this roughly so i have uh the, the first r okay this is risk sorry okay uh, i don't know anyway so this is my first risk to reward now i'm you know w achieving one to one if prices move a little bit lower again i can get out here at two to one reward to risk ratio so i got out early because you know my price was a little bit better for you if you're working with the wide version you sell here uh, your stop loss is a little bit here now your risk is higher you want prices to go like this maybe for you to get two to one so it's not the best yeah in this case i could have gotten three to one but you got my point the preferred version it's more conservative you might miss out on trades but that, tot that that's totally fine i just you know i can accept that okay let's move on and yeah it's the same on the opposite side where's the wide and where's the preferred just you know move the preferred where's the wide in order to for you to know where's the wide version and how to draw it where's the leg out that's an explosive candle another one that's the explosive what's this candle it's indecisive okay and one two three four five six maybe this one also this for starting from here to here this is my base prices are just moving in a sideways it's a balance call it a balance call it a base call it an equilibrium it's just you know supply and demand is roughly equal and here we have explosive maybe decisive maybe explosive candles so this is my leg out this is my leg in i have my base thank you very much so now that i have my base let's draw the supply and demand in the wide version just work on the extremes where's the highest wick here i'm just losing my you know mouse sensitivity at the moment this is the highest wick and this is the lowest wick this is the wide version again it's exactly the same you just want prices to move lower touch the zone thank you very much your stop loss is below the distal line guys if you now focus with me the proximal line and the distal line has been reversed why because the proximal line is the nearest to the price and now in the demand zone the proximal line comes first and then the distal line this is where you should have your stops uh, placed a little bit below so the proximal and the distal i don't care about you know the names just call them uh, a and b but you should know where is a and where is b and what's the uh, use of every line so the proximal is the entry and the distal is where you should you know consider your stops to be placed um, the other side now we have looked at the wide version okay where is the preferred here is the preferred nothing the distal didn't change or didn't change it's the same as i said never change your distal it's exactly the extreme of it but in the proximal instead of working with the wicks like here in the white we just worked with the bodies where is the highest body in the base candles those are the highest bodies roughly so we work with the proximal so here if we're gonna draw it here from the wide you know it's the extreme but the preferred i just work with the bodies instead of the wicks okay great now we move on to the other supply zone okay oh uh, move preferred okay where's my leg out oh explosive decisive explosive explosive oh indecisive so my base is from here indecisive indecisive okay we are so this is my leg out this is my leg in and one two three only three candles form my base so those are you know my base candles this is where the supply you know started to exceed demand and we had this huge leg out so this is where we have some unfilled orders how can i draw the wide version 
from the highest end to the lowest end with the wicks. The distal line is again on top because it's a supply zone. The proximal line is the nearest to price. My stop loss should be above the uh, distal. And here we go. Okay. How about the... Okay, guys. I think... I wasn't really thinking to make this as a quiz, but let me do something. This is candle number one. This is candle number two. This is candle number three of the base. And because we are having this wide version, so we are, you know, our distal and proximal lines are on the extremes. Can you tell me if I want to draw the preferred? Uh, the distal will not change and the proximal will change on which candle high or low or open or close should I draw my proximal line I hope that the question is you know clear so if I want to move the proximal line one bottom of two short candles one open yes thank you very much so those are the three candles of my base this still will not change and the proximal will slightly change because we don't and we don't no longer we care about the uh, low we will be focusing on the bodies so did i get it right of course i did i prepared this webinar yes it's the proximal line will be placed on the open of uh the 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 base candle this one okay so how how did i know i identified my leg out i ad identified my leg in i isolated the base candles and then i you know uh, will i work with the wicks will i work with the bodies i'm working with the preferred or the white version or whatever okay the last thing will be here and right now we will do it the opposite I want you to be confused okay this is the preferred version on a drop base rally explosive boom explosive boom explosive what's this no it's not it's an indecisive what's this it's an indecisive what's this it's indecisive so i have my leg out i have one two three indecisive where's my leg in it's one two three decisive probably explosive candles so this is my leg in this is my leg out and those again three candles are my base so in this case because we are working with the preferred the distal line is here the lowest wick of the base candles and the proximal lines should be the highest body of the candles of the three base so in this case we are working only with the bodies here and this is our proximal line again if this is candle number one this is candle number two this is candle number three this is my base candles guys if i want to draw the wide version on those three base candles which high low open or close of which candle should my proximal line be placed on close of one think again at the high of the week of candle number three. I saw you got it wrong the first time, you're focused and you got it right this time. Thank you very much. Yes, because simple, because one, two, three, those are my three candles. In the white version, we just work with the extremes. Where's the extreme? Oh, this is the high and this is the low. The low doesn't change, this is the extreme, uh, which is the distal and the proximal will just move to be like this. So instead of working, you know, with the body, we just took, you know, the high extremes, highest high or the highest wick and the lowest wick. Okay, I think it might be time for some questions before we can go through the markets. I want you to, to, to stay ahead with me because I will open the markets right now and we'll actually figure out some supply and demand zones, fresh ones. What's the recommended time frame for scalping intraday or swing trading? Okay. As like any other technical analysis strategy or tool, whatever it is, it works better on the large time frames. 
So the weekly supply and demand is definitely better than the daily. The daily is definitely better than the four hours. Don't even think, or maybe, yeah, maybe the four hours and the one hour is good, but not as the daily. Don't even think to draw supply and demand zones on the 30 minutes time frame. It's just, you know, it wouldn't. Because 30 minutes, an explosive candle on the 30 minutes is just a London session open or a New York session open. I mean, it's not that strong demand or supply to say, yeah, here are some unfilled orders. It, it's not. It's just, you know, support and resistance. Think of it that way. And it, 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 it shouldn't or it must not be, you know, respected. But on the daily, if you see an explosive candle on the daily time frame, oh my God, there's definitely unfilled orders. On the weekly, it's the same. To draw supply and demand, I mean, okay, I've, I've got this. Thank you very much for your daily live and good afternoon. Thank you very much. Okay, I think you guys choose which, uh, whatever instrument you would like me to check. Boom. No, we will just check the dollar index. Guys, I will do it once and then we will, I will ask you to, to you know, participate. <laughs> it's just so simple and so clear. No, but give me, let me, let me get to you the, the weekly. Come on, guys. Come on. Price is right now here. Um, so we will just check for recent price moves. And this one, guys. You see this one? What's this? What type of candle is this? What type of candle is this? Decisive? 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 Okay. Explosive, yeah. I, I really believe it's an explosive. Why? Because if you check the range, come on, like it's um, 2% or sorry, 1.6%. It's definitely larger than this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't see any bigger candle than this one. So I would say probably more on the explosive side. Uh, body is 60%. Do we need to measure it? I mean, yeah, objective rules are there for a reason, but I mean, this is some powerful selling because this is also a weekly time frame. So whether you say it's decisive, whether I say it's an explosive, this is a clear leg out to me. So that if this is a leg out, what is this happening? Okay, I think I can use this. Wait, 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 wait. Just remove drawings, okay. So this is, you know, a leg out. Where's the leg in? Here is the leg in, right? Two decisive, probably this one is explosive or decisive candle. So we have a leg out, we have a leg in and we are left with two indecisive candles. This is my base. Okay, so what should we do if we want to, um, what, what's the supply zone called? It's a drop, base, drop, right? So we have a drop here. We formed a base somehow. And then we are forming, uh, let me get it above, price, 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 visual order, bring to front. Okay, so it's a drop, base, drop. So as we said, those two candles serve as base. If I want to draw the wide version on those two candles, I would just work with the extremes from the lowest wick to the highest wick. Preferred 104. What? 104 preferred, 10370. Where is 104? Yeah, okay. This is the preferred. And the wide 10375. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, you're right. You are right. 100% SL. Yes, that's a good question now. Cell limit 104. Um, the wick of explosive candle is a problem. You mean this one. And this is where you can, you know, be, be 
subjective with your analysis. Personally, I would never, you know, neglect this high. Why is that? Because, yeah, prices can go higher. I short here and still go higher to touch this. So if this trade I might think of, I would definitely have my stops placed, you know, not above the distal line. So this is the distal, right? Here is your distal. Let me do it in red. And here is your entry, which is the proximal. Let me do it in green. So the normal rule says that your your stop loss should be slightly above the distal. Okay. Or let me get it in this way. This is the short position. So your entry is here. Your stop should be slightly higher above the distal. Okay. 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 Wait, 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 wait. right so the stop is slightly above the distal but if you check okay there is a wick here personally i would just raise it a little bit even more and this in, in in this case you will have to decide on the risk to reward ratio so just imagine if prices of the dollar index just went higher from here it tapped into our sell position and we are now short the dollar where should i have my targets near at least we will be you know uh, going back again to test this low so the targets would be around here in this case with my stops above even the wick of the explosive or this candle i still have you know a 1.8 risk to reward ratio personally i can say yes it's a good uh trade the other thing is this is the wide version what can we do if we have the preferred version so just disregard this wick just imagine if prices went higher to the preferred and tapped into our sell position now we even have a 3.5 risk to reward ratio definitely yes and this is even way more conservative because our stops are just above the explosive candidate so yes and this is like on a weekly time frame so the um the the position will take time but it's fine you just throw the dollar from around 104 stops around maybe 105 we can even go a little bit higher and targets around 101 perfect perfect drop base drop scenario okay let's check another one so boom boom okay um now this is interesting prices were moving higher somehow here something happened and prices started moving lower where can i find my supply zone it's definitely supply because prices were moving higher something you know sold the prices here and we are moving lower again how can i identify the supply and demand what's step number one if you're ever confused or just, you know, lost in, in the thought process, just think of, you know, what we, the steps of identifying the supply and demand. Number one, identify the leg out. Okay. The leg out should be an explosive candle. Okay. So the explosive candle is here definitely an explosive one so this is a leg out okay um i'm getting a little bit confused here yeah so this is the leg out boom explosive candidate so we, prices are continuing lower because some supply happened here where is the leg in the leg in is where prices came from prices were moving higher so it came from specifically those two candles as we said the leg in could be decisive could be explosive but i want clear price action those prices were moving higher tapped into something here and we are left with this explosive candle so we have our leg out we have our leg in and we are left with a couple of candles here that looks to me pretty much this indecisive a large wicks to the high and to the low small bodies large wigs large wigs this is definitely a state of balance after some upward moves we reached some equilibrium price here 
boom, there is supply. So this is a rally base drop. Now, let's draw the supply zone. As we said, let me just zoom in, okay? It couldn't get any bigger than this. This is my explosive leg out. This is my whatever explosive leg in. So I am left with the candles from here to here. This is my base. Now, for the wide version, I will just go with the wide version. It's the extremes from the highest wick to the lowest wick. This is my base. Right? Are you guys following me? That's my base. This is somewhere inside that we started the selling pressure. How about the preferred? Can someone try to tell me which price roughly or... Um, okay, wait, 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 wait. Can I do it real quick? Yeah, it has to be done. One. No, it cannot. Yeah. Can someone tell me roughly the price where my preferred... So this is my distal line. This is the extreme. Where should my proximal line be if I'm working with the preferred version? Hundred and ten ninety, hundred and ten. Yeah, you probably got it got it right. Around this one. Because I would be working with you know the bodies instead of the wicks. Whereas the lowest body in this supply, this is the lowest body. This will be my proximal line. And this would be my distal line. This is a huge supply zone. And this is the preferred version. The wide version will just be this one. So you have the preferred and you have the wide version. That's pretty much it. Okay, so I think we have found recently on, on the dollars just drop, base drop. We have rally, base drop. We need to find some demand zones on other uh okay guys it's just clear on gold can you find any demand zones where are some explosive candles that we need to highlight roughly do you see any explosive lowest body to before the explosive candle yes uh, 2000, 2000, 2000. Here, yes, I would say 100%, but you missed this. Guys, when you always are looking at supplier demand, you should look recently. So if we're going down, like, okay, do we have any explosive candles? Um, uh, not yet. Maybe this one. Okay, this one explosive, small one, maybe on a smaller time frame, but generally, no, 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 no. Okay explosive one explosive two wow we have some base wow we have explosive one two we have already identified some rally base rally because you have um you have what wait we you have the leg out which is here explosive you have the leg in and you have the base two candles okay let's draw the demand zone I'm not sure if it's available or not yeah so that's the explosive number one explosive number two and this is again explosive what's between those explosives we have two indecisive candles so in this case if i'm working with the wide version i'll just go with the extremes like this which is this candle because I'm not sure if it's available or you can see it or not. There are some wicks here. This same candle has the wick, you know, higher and lower. And this is a demand zone. What's this? This is the wide version. Can I have the preferred version? Sure. I will just not look at the distal line will not change. But in this case, I'll not look on the wicks. 
I will look on the bodies. What's where's the highest body of the two candles? This one. This one body is higher than this one, so I will work with this as a preferred. So that's the preferred. That's the white. Anyway, there is a demand zone here. Someone said, I'll keep it with the preferred because I work with the preferred. Someone said here, uh, around 2000, there is an explosive candle. Yes, there is. So, this is an explosive one. This one is a decisive or an explosive. This one is really, I would say this one is either decisive or indecisive because it's not really bigger than the previous one, two, three. Okay, it seems that prices were going higher strongly. We had a period of nothing before boom. That's it. It's a rally, base rally, and this base will be big. Now, all of the examples during this webinar was just one, two, three base candles. In this case, it's a lot. It is a lot. So we have one, two, three. The demand zone can go from the lowest wick this could be the wide version someone will say this candle no i wouldn't really consider this candle this one is a really big candle i would never say okay this is a demand zone i'm joking it's like from 1950 to 2150 it's too much so if i'll be working with a base i would say this is the wide version and i would say this is the preferred version this is where really you know the price moved higher yeah uh, please know the webinar just we now compensate i don't speak french i'm not sure what in my you know appearance gave you that i'm french but i'm not so can you show back when it touches please it didn't you know because we are we are looking at uh, recent we are looking at recent but yeah maybe here we had some sort of supply and this is the weekly time frame you see guys prices went higher something boom we went lower again went higher again boom again so here we went lower because here we had some supply right okay let me zoom in here there's where we have supply prices were moving lower moved sideways moved lower again moved lower where's the explosive candle here i would say this one i would say this is a drop base drop Okay, where's the base? This to me would be the wide version and you can see how many times we touched this until we came back. So if you had the supply zone here, we went lower, came back, touched the zone and went lower again. We went again to touch it and went lower again. But it's no longer fresh, and that's why we have had this silly wick higher to, you know, grab liquidity from the upper one. But if you've had this supply drawn here once, you could have shorted this once. Probably I wouldn't short it again. And this is the wide version. Did it tap into the preferred version? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. So this is the preferred. We went lower one. The second time didn't anyway the distal is the same so yeah there is uh this is how you can play with this practically it will need some practice it will need you for you to follow someone for some time who actually works with supply and demand and 
you will be able to grasp the concept by time. Okay. Oh, this could have been, you know, the longest webinar I've been in. Uh, okay, it's time for questions. I'm pretty much done. I never got my reward back and my only win from July 22. Believe me when I say I have no idea what you're talking about. I know that sometimes our marketing team, they do some offer some prizes for people who are following us on the weekly live analysis. I see this, but this has a team, which is the marketing team. I don't even know how they choose the winners. I don't even know how they contact the winners back. So uh, I'll tell you something. You can just, you know, email me on my email. Send me your case and I'll make sure it will be forwarded to our marketing team. But please, if you are in a webinar, educational webinar, please just make sure that you keep your questions, you know, uh, within the topic. What about sideways? Trading, that's uh, an old question. Which time frame best in swing trading? I do swing trading. I do swing trading using supply and demand. And I use the daily, the weekly, daily and the eight hour time frame. I don't usually look at slower time frames. Um, okay, I never go. How about adding the alligators? Okay, what I've given you today is a powerful way to know supply and demand zones and where prices might reverse if you want this to work with other indicators it's fine i personally use it with momentum why because as i as i said supply and demand is not 100 percent accurate nothing is okay so you just add some extra tools to help you what i personally do is i use momentum indicators because if price is going back to test a supply zone. How can I know that this supply zone will be respected or not? I just don't enter trades. I mean, I could, but I just want to add more tool on top of my toolkit, you know? So I look at momentum indicators. I look at how powerful the price is on the way up. Because if it's going up to touch the supply with powerful moves, maybe it will just break above right but if it's going up slowly slowly with weak momentum buyers are just pushing price as much as they could once they just tap into the supply boom it's game over they will uh you know prices will move lower so i combine supply and demand with momentum and i don't use anything else in my trading strategy guys if you want me to talk about the momentum indicator that i specifically use type one in the chat right now and i'll do it i promise you i'll do it the next one RSI, not exactly. Okay, thank you. And what if I want to be a scalp trader? Say goodbye to your money. One, 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 one. Okay. <laughs> uh, can you show example of momentum? This will take hours and hours. And believe me, guys, my working hours during the week, it ended like one hour ago. So I'm, I'm already done. I'm already, today is Friday, so we have a weekend tomorrow. I'm ending the week with a two hour webinar almost. So believe me, it for, it's for your interest and uh, not to see any uh, examples for momentum right now. And yes, momentum and Elite Wave 2, I don't do Elite Wave anymore. I used to do it. I'm sorry. It's a lot. It's a lot. No, I don't do it. Because to be honest, Elite Waves can never be just summarized in one webinar, not two, not three, not four. It will have a, it will be, you know, it will need a course, a full educational course to explain Elite Waves. And it will take months of practice. And it's not any better than any other technical tools. I'm sorry to all my friends, you know, the eliticians out there. You do your thing, I do my thing. I've, I've used Elite Waves for some time. Why would I take literally hours trying to count waves only to, to see that my elitician friend counted them in another way and both our ways somehow could be correct and we don't know who's even correct anymore. So it, it's just, you know, guys, trading should be simple. It should be easy. The hardest thing about trading is your emotions and your psychology. Believe me, this will take you years to develop to be a, a good trader. But for analysis, okay, it's a piece of cake. It's literally a piece of cake. Okay. Um, 
can you show an example? Thank you, Mohana. This was very insightful and straight to the point. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy with this. Wow, that was an excellent explanation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Are you from Morocco, if I might ask? No, I'm not. I'm from Egypt. I might look some like Moroccan, um, but I'm not. I appreciate for what you are doing. I notice you love what you do. Thank you a lot. Thank you. And thank you for noticing that I do love what I do because I do it. I, I, I definitely love it. It's just, you know, my thing to do. Sound reasonable. Forget the waves. Yeah, please. Excellent explanation. I love your webinars as I learn a lot. It's my job. Thank you very much. So, guys, I think we'll have to conclude this here. I was so happy with uh, this webinar. I'm so happy, you know, that, that you were able to attend. And, okay, what, what's your next step from here? My personal advice. Um, take the notes that you have written, hopefully, down while, while doing this webinar. Practice it on your own. Open the charts. Do, try to figure out supply and demand zones over and over again and make sure that you join me in the weekly live analysis webinar why is that because in the live analysis webinar i i pretty much use supply and demand um so if you want to make sure that you are following me if you want to make sure that we have the same zones you know drawn and and so on yeah you can you can continue practicing either on your own or hopefully with me and the other guys in here because you will be even better with um, with practicing. Thank you very much and for your daily live and good afternoon. Nassim, you have sent this like six, seven times. <laughs> Thank you very much. Guys, whether this will be uploaded to YouTube or not, I'm pretty not sure yet. It, is it recorded? Yes, it is. Will it be uploaded? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah let me let me see what we can do thank you very much guys i think this comes to an end i'm very happy that you have been joining me today and i really hope that you have learned something new i will see you guys on monday in the live weekly analysis session it's at 12 p.m uh dubai time you can which is gmt plus four and you guys have a wonderful weekend stay away from markets just you know Chill out a little bit and make sure that you are well prepared mentally for the new week. Thank you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye bye.